Would you put this all on him after what you saw in the Super Bowl on Sunday? No, I wouldn't put it all on him. He made some uh, some mistakes that uh, are are under understandable, and he made some mistakes that that aren't as understandable. When you look at the offense collectively, there's a lot of responsibility, and wh what other whatever other term you want to use to go around. So collectively, not being able to get the running game started. New England borderline played a goal line defense against their against their offense. They had seven yes. guys up on the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. literally up on the line of scrimmage. At some point, you got to spread it out. You you've got to change the tempo. You've got to you can't just keep running into a brick wall. And you didn't really see that adjustment where New England did adjust. On that one touchdown drive, they, they brought in a different personnel group. They went to empty. Yes. They ran some complimentary plays. Gave them the illusion they're getting in a run formation, but then went empty out of that run formation. And, and, it, and it cleaned up looks for Tom, and it was the difference in the game. So th there's the coaching component to it. Brandon Cooks, look, I, I would argue he could have caught two of those balls. Two of those balls that were knocked down, mm -hmm. he could have easily made plays on those. Todd Gurley hurt, not hurt. There's, there's some uh, accountability there as well. you, you got to be able to come up big in those big moments or at least not come up small in those big moments. The offensive line, they've been healthy. They, they've had continuity. They couldn't deal with New England's line games. They, they, mm -hmm. they couldn't keep the pocket clean long enough. So to say it's, it's all on him, I don't think that's fair. Well, and I don't believe in the – anytime you face a team like Belichick where they're going to put – one of their starting corners, and he's going to travel like Stephon Gilmore did with Brandon Cooks. And then you're going to bracket coverage the other wide Robert receivers. Woods. Now, I'm just going to tell you, there's a lot of things that I've earned an expertise in. One of them is reading coverages. Another one is we broke the NFL record four years in a row, Jake Reed and myself, as far as 1,000-yard seasons. Then we draft Randy Moss. Randy Moss and I... Broke that same record. We have that same record. We had 4,000-yard seasons in a row. So we saw that type of coverage more than anything else. And what you have to do, when you have a, a defensive coach, he's going to commit three defenders to two people, you got to put them on the same side of the field. Because you're talking about something would have made it easy for Jared Goff because coach said the thing. From the beginning, they were trying to play seven people in the box. Well, let's just do a little math. All right? Just from a slot formation, you play seven in the box. I move to my slot receiver. They got three defenders over there. You got seven in the box. They got one guy. Bill always likes to keep one guy in the hole. So I can throw to my running back. I can throw to my tight end. So they didn't create situations that Jarrett Goff could take advantage of what Bill were trying to do. One thing Coach Mangini taught me this. If they put a wide receiver, um, if they put a, a cornerback on a wide receiver all over the field, Move the wide receiver in the backfield because that small defender, he's not used to guarding a guy, run him in motion. So they didn't do the types of things. So for me, it is a team game. They didn't support golf. Brandon Cook making $16 million. Come up with one of those plays. Especially, and this is why I get so frustrated at times when people, when evaluating quarterbacks, just do the quarterback win stat. Quarterback wins, quarterback losses. Jared Goff does not, is not any better if Cooks comes down with the, the pass right the one play before the interception. The, pla the pass mm -hmm. with that I thought was Goff's best pass of the night right. that hit him in the hands. He would have been in the same class as Tom Brady, threw one good pass the whole time. Now, Brady, right. they capitalized Brady on it. Brady threw it to Gronk and it set up the touchdown. And it, it, if this pass right here is completed, the story we might be talking about is Jared Goff in back-to-back -back weeks in New Orleans yes. executes a fourth-quarter comeback against the Patriots in the Super Bowl, executes a fourth-quarter comeback. And that would, and this is where on the other, like, this is where people get irritated with me, I suppose. It wouldn't make me think one bit better or worse about him. If he hadn't completed this pass, I'd still be on here saying, I don't know how good Jared Goff is. Because I've been saying that all year long. I have real concerns about Jared Goff. I have concerns about what he turned into when Cooper Cup went out. I have concerns about what he was all year when he was pressured. I want to know why over the last eight games of the season he threw more picks than touchdowns. But that, to me, was not about the Super Bowl. Like, Jenna, your point is the narrative surrounding Goff right now is the moment was too big for him. I, I saw him down three get the ball in a blaringly loud Superdome drive his team in the field goal range. So, like, that – I know the Super Bowl's a bigger moment, but not a dramatically bigger moment. Mm -hmm. I think the issues with Jared Goff are, if I'm the Rams, more concerning 
because you're only going to play in one Super Bowl a year if you're lucky. It's why against the Bears, did, was he a shell? Against the Eagles, did he play so poorly? Why, if you right. got There's any pressure There's things we should be him, concerned about, but they're justified. Right. It's easy for someone to say, oh, man, he's young. He's in the Super Bowl. Yeah, Tom Brady was in his ninth. He didn't look real comfortable to me. You see them darting that ball down at people's feet? So pressure in the NFL, it's the variable. There's not a lot of guys that throw the ball well in pressure, but Jared Goff has got to get better in that situation. So, Coach, if you're a system quarterback like that and the system doesn't work for you, we see how Tom Brady adjusts. What do you do if you're a guy like Jared Goff? Well, the system does work for him. He had. Yeah, not they, on right, Sunday, she, though. She meant in the moment. In uh, the moment. Okay, but... But, but in his totality. Yeah, in, in the moment, though, you, you all, there's other things that can help you. And, and there's, there's coaching as well that goes into this. And, and when you look at what New England did in terms of bringing in that different personnel group, lining up and empty, allowing it to clarify what the coverage was, allowing Tom Brady mm -hmm. and that offense to play to their strengths, that was something that came with, with experience from a coaching perspective. From a, from a player perspective as well, you're going to grow and you're going to learn. On that max pressure where he threw the ball up and, and Stephon Gilmore intercepted it, okay, you never throw a fade versus off coverage. No. Never. Like, Absolutely. You, you don't do it. And I would like to think that he won't make that same mistake again. Now, will he have the chance in a Super Bowl to do Maybe that? Maybe not. We, we don't know. But they're, they're collectively – Sean McVay, he's a young coach, too. They're, he's going to grow. They, they're, they, they've got to make adjustments to help each other with this growth process. Right, and Coach and I both see attributes in Jarrett Goff that we like. And we've seen the system, because we saw him in the old system, and, and we've seen him evolve. They've won double digits um, in, in wins the last two years. So the system's working. He is getting better. He did get his team into the Super Bowl. So, no, it's just that we just want to speed up the process. I don't believe the game was too big for him. I believe there's certain aspect of his game that he's got to work on that when you get in those situations, it makes you better. I believe Sean McVay will be better in those situations. I believe Brandon Cooks will be better in those situations. I believe Robert Woods won't be eliminated from the game the way he was. So the support and cast. Todd Gurley, how healthy is he? So if Todd Gurley is 100%, Jared Goff, we don't see that Jared Goff. Well, and that's the way it's been. Todd Gurley, when he's running and running well, we don't see that side of Jared Goff. And that's what really differentiates New England from everybody else. If the Kansas City Chiefs had, for all intents and purposes, lost Tyreek Hill right before the playoffs, I, I, I don't know that anyone could have said they are going to make the Super Bowl. The one game he got eliminated in, they or he essentially got eliminated right. in, they got eliminated in. If the New England Patriots lost Gronk, we saw them. Oh, they went and won a Super Bowl. Last yeah. year, lost Edelman. Edelman. Oh, they went yeah. and Amandola. went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like it, and so the, the Patriots are the one team where it, eliminating their biggest weapon, they find a way around it. I, the Rams, now the Rams should have scored more than three points, but Todd Gurley was all but eliminated. And when that happened to them, their offense ground to a halt. Mm -hmm. That that would happen to a lot of players in this league. Now, I think golf, golf, golf and McVay this summer, they got to figure out the last eight games. Why the first 11 were we 10 and 1? You had 26 touchdowns, six picks, and 114 rating. And the last eight, you had a 74 rating, more, t more picks than touchdowns. What happened there? That to me is a bigger long term concern than what happened Sunday evening. All right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.